Nick Fenton here. Just wanted to revisit the overall crypto markets. It's been a few days. I uh, thought I'd update you on my overall position status and update you on the overall market. So let's take a look. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do here was revisit this coinmarketcap.com, uh, go to tools, global charts, and we talked about this maybe a, a week or two ago. Um, I first like to go to year to date and was just kind of making an observation here on the overall total market cap for all coins, Bitcoin plus all the altcoins. And we had recently seen a push to 180 billion roughly, um, a pretty big dip. And then it was revisiting this 180 billion and showing some resistance at that level where we have now broken 180 billion and it's 182 billion. So as I said in that previous video, this could result in a quick run up to, you know, 195, 200 billion range. Um, that at the moment looks like it's mostly going to be led by Bitcoin, but it could also include uh, some upside momentum from some of the altcoins. And just to kind of take a look here, here's the total market cap excluding Bitcoin. You can see it's not nearly as exciting and you can see it's been pretty flat here recently as opposed to the nice uptick, which basically just tells you that this uptick is almost 100% Bitcoin related. And um, then we go down here and we can see the divergence between Bitcoin and the rest of the coins continues. You know, it's just basically Bitcoin is just pulling away, just showing way more strength than the rest of the bunch. So Bitcoin is definitely still the boss. And I'm very glad that I've been overweight Bitcoin. Based on previous videos, I, I, based, you know, I was 100% Bitcoin until late last week. I transitioned a little bit into Ethereum, but not very much. Ethereum versus the US dollar has been flat. So really no harm, no foul there. Um, but Ethereum versus Bitcoin has been continued weakness. Let's look at the five day chart. What I should have done is I should have just shorted Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And that would have definitely uh, promoted my core objective of acquiring more Bitcoin by hopping around with between long positions in altcoins, short positions in altcoins versus Bitcoin. You know, I didn't make exactly the right move, but no harm, no foul. And 95% of my holdings are Bitcoin right now. I only put about 5% into Ethereum. Uh, so all, all in all, I'm very happy right now. I'm making more money here than I am in the stock market. So that's a, a beautiful thing. I'm gonna start continuing to transition more dollars into this market, but I'm still gonna be very careful. The liquidity picture is way different in the crypto markets versus you know option high liquidity options markets and equities markets. So you know of course the majority of my holdings are going to remain in those markets for now, but I am transitioning a little more and more from my bank account and from my trading accounts over into the crypto markets. So just building, building, building my Bitcoin position until the market tells me to cash out, stop, you know move around. I'm just taking it day by day, basically, is what I'm getting at. So here, Bitcoin, we're at 65.57. And as I've mentioned, I keep it simple. How is Bitcoin looking versus the US dollar here? And as you can see, we still have this major uptrend intact. The most recent video I made, I touched on an observation I was making in Bitcoin um, versus the US dollar. The observation was this head and shoulders pattern. Let me just draw it out for you real quick. So essentially I was saying here was the left shoulder, here was the head, and here was the right shoulder. And what happened, what I noted was, of course, we need to wait for a trend line or a neckline break rather of the head and shoulders pattern. And at that point, you could you know, potentially see some downside pressure in Bitcoin. Well, of course, we've seen nothing but strength since that video. So that observation is null and void. Pay no more attention to the head and shoulders pattern. It is completely null and void. One thing to observe here is if you pull out to a one year chart and you grab a trend line tool, we've got a, you know, a nice little rising wedge in place. 
on the one-year chart. So essentially, you know, we're just kind of trending higher in a tightening channel is what we're observing here. Uh, what this means, yet to be determined, we need to see a break on one of the sides of this, of this uh, rising wedge before any observations can be made, any, any determinations can be made. If we zoom in here to the one month chart, actually I'm gonna go to the five day. You can see what we've recently seen with regard to price action was a little mini bull flag that finished its move and we just seen a little consolidation and continued strength to the upside. I mean, this is a beast. There is nothing like it in the marketplace that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, very significant price action to the upside, very bullish price maneuvering. Here on the one month chart, if we draw those similar lines, we see more of an uptrend channel. So we've kind of got a channel within this longer term rising wedge. But I think more interesting is this is this rising wedge on the one year chart. So I'm keeping an eye on that. It's probably, a, yeah, you can observe it on the six month chart even better. So there's the six month chart. Just keep an eye, if we break to the upside, I think it just tells us that we're gonna continue pushing higher. Overall, going revisiting this chart year to date, and really we can probably go to a three month. Um, revisiting this chart, now that we've broken this, this uh, total market cap resistance, I think we're gonna to push to 200 billion. You know, so I think we're gonna con see continued strength here in Bitcoin. Surely it's gonna take a breather, so we're gonna see our dips. Uh, for now, holding core position in Bitcoin long. Let's take a look at Bitcoin versus the other coins. We already mentioned Bitcoin versus Ethereum, and as I pointed out in a previous video, we have this downtrend that was broken the day of the Bitcoin gold fork. And, but since that break, we really didn't see any continuation telling me to really go hard in converting Bitcoin into Ethereum or any of these other coins. So what I did was I observed that, I made a little bit of a move once I started seeing some stabilization here. Right here, I started seeing a little bit of series of higher lows after this uptrend break. So it was basically playing off of this downtrend resistance turn support, uh, churning a little bit off of that support and I thought I saw you know an opportunity to potentially see some relative strength in Ethereum versus Bitcoin. So I transitioned 5% of my holdings into Ethereum to test that theory. And of course, that theory failed. But like I said, Ethereum versus US dollars flat. So from that sense, no harm, no foul. From the sense of moving out of my overweight Bitcoin position into a little bit of Ethereum uh, long, that was the wrong move. What we've seen is continued downside pressure and we've actually made some new lows here in Ethereum versus Bitcoin, uh, currently at 0 0.045, uh, 0 0.046 roughly. So definitely seeing continued weakness in Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Will this continue? I don't know. There's no real support under this level until you zoom out to these this area. The major support would be right around here, 0 0.036, 0 0.037 range. Um, so I think that would be an interesting next level to see Ethereum versus Bitcoin test. Next, we take a look at IOTA. IOTA, same story. We're just seeing this downtrend. It pushed above the downtrend resistance. That is now support. And as you can see, it's riding it as support, but it's just continuing to ride it lower. So there's really nothing exciting going on here. And at this point, you have a new downtrend intact that you have to go ahead and monitor this downtrend resistance. So overall, continued weakness in IOTA, Litecoin, Terribly weak, terribly weak. I mean, look at that. New five-day lows. Let's take a look at the one-month chart. New one-month lows. New three-month lows. And really, we have to go all the way out to the one-year chart before we see the area that it's visiting right now. And there's not a whole lot of, you know, there's a little congestion here, but there's no real defined uh, support. You know, right at this level we're at right now, there's some potential defined support right there. Aside from that, nothing too exciting for uh, Litecoin holders, I would be transitioning over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just flexing on all these fools. Uh, here's a take a, let's take a look at NEO, same story. You know, we're just seeing the same story across the board. Monero, same story, new lows. Vertcoin, now Vertcoin uh, is a beast and I've been, I've been kind of following this and I'm actually looking into mining Vertcoin 
uh, starting my, my first little mining rig with just six car, six GPU cards. And you know, Vertcoin and Zencash are the two that I'm interested in mining. So I've been kind of watching Vertcoin for the past couple weeks as I've continued to do research on the whole mining thing before I make any purchases. And Vertcoin has shown extreme relative strength uh, versus Bitcoin. Now today it's having a little bit of a dip, but you know after this kind of strength, you gotta take a breather, right? So Vertcoin, nice uptrend intact, overall looking pretty strong here. Um, may, may be due for a pullback here after this big move. We're seeing a little bit of a pullback today, of course, but I'm talking about a pullback continuation from where we are at this current point. Uh, but again, you know, relative strength in Vertcoin, got to respect it. Zencash is another one I've been keeping an eye on. We had a really strong pop, you know, basically doubled up from about six US dollars to, you know, almost a triple up, right? I think it was like seven bucks to 21 bucks, something like that, if I remember correctly. Um, but, you know, if we look at it versus Bitcoin, it's a uh, 0.0013 move all the way up to 0.0047 that's significant um, but right now we're downtrending you're pulling back after that significant upside move so Zencash is looking like it's trying to you know it's going to trend lower maybe find a base stabilize there before it potentially continues its trek higher Zcash bearish versus Bitcoin Ripple making new lows so you know the story is the same across the board except for a couple outliers in uh, Zencash and Vertcoin, and really, you know, those, those are starting to show a little bit of weakness versus Bitcoin. It's, you know, the, the story continues. Bitcoin's the boss. You know, how do you argue? How do you argue with Bitcoin being the boss here? So, very happy with my observations thus far, very happy with how they've treated me financially, and as soon as the markets tell me that I should start jumping into some of these altcoins, and uh, you know, diversifying away from Bitcoin, I will. But as as of now, it still continues to tell me just hold Bitcoin. And you know, as it sits, it's telling me to short these altcoins versus Bitcoin. But I'm just not comfortable doing that yet. So that's all I've got for you. Be back soon. And talk to you then.